For dynamics, there's a couple of things that we want to do. First, uh, we're going to decide where we want to have dynamics in the stack. And whenever you're doing dynamics with uh, anything, for that matter, you're usually going to want to uh, simulate on the lowest possible common denominator that you can, and then uh, up-res that um, in the uh, end result. So to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that we do our dynamics before we convert our, to hairs and you know uh, add many, many more uh, segments and many more things to simulate. And I'm also going to go down into the uh, guides from Surface, and I'm just going to actually drop down our number of points to three. And what that's going to do is when we kind of go in, I'm just going to go into the perspective view. And I'll turn on show end result. And when I set this to three, as opposed to eight points per segment, you can see that these are nice and curved. We get a lot of detail out of them. And when I set it to three, there's going to be uh, less detail, which means less detail to simulate. And in the end, we can add that detail back, which we will do. So I am going to go right above our surface comb, and I'll turn off show end result here so we can see, yeah, we have a very simple guide that we're going to be working with. And we'll add our dynamics modifier. So here's our dynamics modifier. And right off the bat, we're going to be able to simulate this and see exactly what's going on. I'm going to just uh, start simulating without any animation. We do have some animation for this character and see how these hairs kind of fly around and, and do different things. Now, there's a couple of things that are in here that are going to help us out. First, when I go in to the Mass Effects dynamic tool set, we're going to be able to use some visualization for our feathers. So let's just go in here and we're going to turn on tools and say enable visualizer. And you can see these are much, much too big as far as the um, pieces that are getting simulated as cylinders. So let's just go down and uh, we're going to set the global radius to be a lot smaller. We'll set it to one and just go back and let's simulate it once more. So that's a little bit better. We may even go down to 0.5. So here we are at 0.5, and that's looking a lot more stable and nice. So we'll turn off the visualizer now, and we'll just start playing with the dynamics. So now when I simulate, we can see that stuff all falls into place, looking pretty good, but maybe not quite as fluffy as we would like feathers to be. So there's three important uh, parameters to kind of deal with here. The first is going to be hair density. Feathers are going to be a lot more fluffy, so I'm going to set this to maybe 0.3. Next is going to be our drag or damping, and I think there's probably going to be a little bit more with feathers, so I'm going to set that to 1. The springiness of feathers uh, means kind of the springiness of each one of these joints could be important, and we may up that a little bit later. And the bendiness is going to be important too. I'm just going to set the bendiness to a pretty low value of 1, because I want those feathers to hold their shape. So now if I go and click on Start Simulation again, you can see they hold their shape a lot better. They kind of go into a uh, settled mode. And then let's just take a look at this with our animation. So I'm going to just zoom back out here a bit and play with our animation. So now we can see the bird kind of move into place and the feathers go with them. And you can see that our feathers kind of rest in a place, they move, they have a little bit of uh, sway with them, which is really nice. So this is definitely looking pretty good for now. Now the Feather system is integrated with 3ds Max base dynamic system Mass Effects, so that all the tools you would use with it, um, you can use. So if there needs to be a rigid body or some cloth or anything else that needs to interact with these feathers, uh, it can inside of the environment. Here we are back here, let's just uh, turn on show end result and uh, we can deselect so we can see these feathers and let's uh, let's press play again so we can actually see how the feathers will look. So there we can see those feathers deforming with the mesh, moving around as the character moves and settling into place. Now one other thing we could do is select the mesh and go into our dynamics and scroll down to our forces and add a little force in here. I have a wind set up in here, and this wind is uh, you know, moderately turbulent and it has a little bit of strength to it, so I'll set that uh, to maybe one. And then we'll go back here and we'll click on play. And you can see that wind blowing 
the, uh, the mesh around. And that way we can get a little bit of turbulence and a little bit of action happening on the mesh um, as we go. We can actually uh, select that wind. So let me click on it here and we can press play. And you can see it blowing back and you can actually adjust that in real time. So I can drop that down or increase it quite a bit and we can get you know some, some really interesting effects. So I may actually set the wind itself to zero And we'll return to the first frame and then I'm going to play with the turbulence. So uh, as I go through here, I'm going to increase the turbulence to maybe something like one. And you can see that will have the feathers kind of fluttering around a little bit. And I'll set the strength to maybe a 0.2 uh, to give us a little bit of a blow as the character goes through. So we talked a little bit about that detail level and that we really want to sim on a low uh, detail level here and adding that back in. So uh, after we go into Hair from Guides, what we can do is just add a uh, Ornatrix detail modifier. So that's basically going to up-res our spline. So I'm going to go in and say Ornatrix detail. And uh, this is set to something fairly high for feathers. We don't need it that high. We'll just set it to 8 and 8. And that way we're going to get that detail back in our setup. So if I zoom in, you can see now they're nice and curved feathers uh, that look really good. And we can go into uh, hair from guides if we want, and we can maybe pump this up to uh, 35,000 hairs just so that we can see the end result there. So we'll go in here and we can see this. I'll just uh, deselect so we can kind of see what's going on and we can see those feathers moving through. So playback may be a little bit difficult in the viewport and that's where we want to go ahead and bake this simulation. We can go in and select our mesh. I'm going to go into the camera view and just like you would any other Mass Effect simulation we'll go into our little simulation tools tab and we'll say bake all or bake selected. I'm going to say bake all and then the simulation will run through and we'll get real-time playback in the view. So here we're back after our bake simulation, which was pretty quick actually. And now we should be able to play back really pretty quick. Uh, we'll go and turn off real time playback just so we can see every frame. You see those settle into place. And the character move through. And the feathers kind of fluttering with the movement of the character, which is really great.